In this dystopian world, the city is controlled by the evil Van der Koy family. Once a year, the head of the family, Hilda, gathers 12 citizens she dislikes to participate in the culling, during which all 12 participants are killed on live television. Boy is a child who has a very simple life in the company of his eccentric mother, who appears to be part of the resistance, and his sister Mina. The siblings hang out together all the time, at the arcade or simply watching TV while eating cereal. Sometimes Mina would make crazy plans for the future, like robbing a bank together to escape from this horrible city. She also likes to give Hilda's statue the finger with her whole hand. Unfortunately, the siblings are eventually chosen for the culling, and Boy has to watch his family get killed by Hilda. He also gets hurt and is left for dead in the jungle. Soon, the shaman finds him and nurses him back to health, although one injury is permanent, Boy is now deaf and mute. He can't even remember what his voice used to be like, so he uses the voiceover of his favorite video game in his inner thoughts. From then on, the shaman starts training Boy so one day he can kill Hilda and get his revenge. He includes all kinds of practice, martial arts, strength training by rolling a statue's head up a hill, and weapons training. Boy regularly gets buried in the mud and uses a bamboo stick to breathe, using the bugs that crawl down the stick for food. If he crawls out of the mud too early, the shaman scolds him and buries him again. Boy also does all the chores around their home and hangs out with his only friends, who happen to be two beetles. The shaman grows his own food and it's not much, which frustrates Boy. Some nights, the shaman uses uppers that make Boy hallucinate and revisit his old memories so he won't forget about his goal. However, most of the time he sees crazy things moving around him. Boy sometimes visits the city to practice reading lips, and when someone bothers him he shows them a little piece of paper explaining his situation. He also keeps seeing Mina everywhere because he can't move on. As years pass, Boy pushes his body to the limit and grows into a powerful young man as the training grows harder. One day during another practice fight, he catches the shaman in a hold and is about to defeat him, but at that moment he gets distracted by another vision of Mina. The shaman immediately uses the chance to beat him and concludes he isn't ready. Afterward, Boy tries to meditate to make Mina's hallucination disappear but it doesn't work. The next time he goes to town, Boy notices a cute flower girl who gives him a flower and smiles in a flirty way. Unfortunately, the sweet moment is interrupted by the arrival of government soldiers, who start chasing people to gather 12 for the next culling. As everyone panics and runs aimlessly, Boy hides and watches Gideon and Glenn join the soldiers. They are part of the Van der Koy family, and seeing them triggers a memory in Boy, when he was a child, he and Mina saw Gideon enter his home to kill a rebel. After gathering all the people in the square, Glenn gives a speech to announce the twelve chosen ones. He starts harassing a poor family, and a woman in the crowd insults him for it, so Glenn shoots her. This causes the crowd to go crazy, and Gideon calls head enforcer June 27th to handle it. She immediately deals with a man with an axe, cutting off his arm before killing him. Then she starts killing every complaining person while her helmet displays different words to match her speech. Boy watches as his traumatic memories are triggered, but the shaman stops him from helping because he isn't ready. In the end, only six people remain for the culling, and Glenn scolds June 27th, who refuses to kidnap any kids. After an argument in sign language, Boy disobeys the shaman and starts running on the rooftops to catch up with the enemy. The group is now stuck in traffic, so Boy sneaks behind one of their cars and gets inside the trunk with a dead body. Later at a warehouse, Boy comes out and watches Melanie scold his relatives for only getting six people instead of twelve. She then tells Gideon to grab six people off the street to complete the set. Suddenly Boy notices the hallucination of Mina next to him and argues with her in his mind, causing him to lose track of the enemy. He starts sneaking around the warehouse while fake Mina moves ahead, playing ninjas. Forgetting she isn't real, Boy tackles her to save her from an incoming cart and is seen by Glenn, who sends the guards after him. Boy runs to hide Mina in a locker and steals a gun, but he remembers the shaman taught him that he's the weapon. Ready for revenge, Boy comes out and starts fighting the soldiers hand to hand, using his mighty punches, a knife, and the men's own guns to kill them one by one. As the soldiers open fire, he uses a body as a shield and a slave called Basho throws him a gun, 
but it doesn't have bullets. After taking a better gun from the body, Boy shoots a few soldiers and runs to hide with Basho, who offers to help kill Hilda if Boy frees him from his chains. Boy shoots the chains to break them, then he goes back to the fight, killing more and more soldiers while Basho hides behind a cart. One by one, every enemy goes down under Boy's incredible abilities, but there's one soldier who refuses to die. Boy keeps on fighting him and eventually gets his hand stuck in a machine to stop him from moving anymore. However, the soldier just pulls and leaves his arm behind to fight Boy again. This time Boy cuts his legs off to finally stop him. Basho celebrates their victory only for Glenn to suddenly open fire on them. He misses his shots and Basho shoots back, hitting him in the leg. Boy prepares to kill Glenn, but Basho reminds him they can extract information from him. Glenn is interrogated and reveals that Hilda hosts a party at her mansion every year before the culling. He even offers to assist them, but Basho kills him by dropping a heavy object on his head. The duo leaves the warehouse and Boy notices a shadow observing them from a distance. Basho takes him to the secret resistance hideout, only to find it deserted. Suddenly, Boy is held at gunpoint by Benny, who lowers his weapon when Basho mentions Boy is an ally. Benny explains that soldiers attacked the rebels, killing everyone but him. Benny speaks a strange dialect, making it hard for Boy to read his lips. Basho learns his girlfriend is dead and has a breakdown, so Boy comforts him. They plan to infiltrate the party, but Boy is distracted by Mina and memories of his childhood. He still has a drawing Mina made as a child. When Basho and Benny explain the final plan, Boy doesn't understand but nods along because Mina tells him to. After arming themselves, they head to the mansion in a van. At the mansion, they knock out a few guards and a chef, whose uniform Boy uses to get into the party. Boy, unfamiliar with a chef's duties, awkwardly roams the house until he gets distracted by macaroons, which he has never had before. Basho, disguised as a guard, reminds him to stay focused. Seeing Hilda nearby, Boy becomes eager for revenge and decides to act chefly. He goes to the kitchen, removes the uniform, and a fight ensues with other workers. Using a cheese grater, Boy gruesomely kills them. He then takes a butcher's knife and heads to the dining hall, slitting a guard's throat before decapitating the person at the head of the table. Boy celebrates killing Hilda, only to realize it's the wrong person. Gideon arrives with guards and reveals the people at the table are actors because they expect resistance members each year. Boy tries to take Gideon hostage but is hit from behind by June 27, letting Gideon escape. A brutal fight ensues between June 27 and Boy, using whatever objects they can grab. As they roll out of the dining room, Boy lands a strong hit, knocking off June 27's helmet. Mina appears, calling the woman pretty, distracting Boy. June 27 takes advantage, pushing him over the railing and knocking him out. Unconscious, Boy has nightmares about his past, the execution of his mother and sister, having his tongue cut out, and being hung from a tree. He remembers the shaman saving him and taking him into the jungle to train him for vengeance. Boy wakes up tied to a chair, with June 27 punching him for the shaman's location. Boy mouths an obscenity at her, causing her to throw an axe near his head. Gideon takes over, tired of the torture and the culling, offering Boy a cigarette, which he eats. Gideon reveals Hilda has become paranoid and murderous, no longer targeting enemies but innocent people. He promises to end it if Boy surrenders the shaman, but Boy refuses, leading Gideon to hit him. Melanie arrives, painting Boy's lips and announcing he'll be the main star of the culling. Tied up in the studio with a shock collar, Boy asks the Mina hallucination why she stopped him from killing June 27, but she doesn't know. The show begins with Hilda rambling in paranoia instead of reading the teleprompter. She pulls a gun on seeing a shadow in the audience, prompting Melanie to send guards to remove her. Boy remembers Gideon's hidden scalpel, uses it to cut his ropes, and starts freeing himself. Melanie announces this year's culling theme as a winter wonderland with serial mascots and demonic elves. Disguised killers start gruesomely murdering the participants, staining the fake snow with blood. One killer attacks Boy, but he defeats the attacker using only his legs, then frees himself and heads to the stage. Melanie activates his shock collar, 
and four elves grab him for the goat man to kill him. However, the goat man kills the elves instead, revealing himself as Basha. Then he bursts in, firing shots, causing panic. Melanie ends the transmission as Gideon smiles. Benny continues shooting enemies while Basho explains how they sneaked in wearing soldier uniforms to find Boy. Boy struggles to understand Benny's lip movements, imagining humorous details. Benny gives Boy a brass knuckle gun that fires bullets when he punches. The trio jumps back into action, killing enemies effortlessly. Melanie, realizing Gideon planned this, points a gun at him. The fight continues, with Boy using the knuckle gun and a carrot to fight a serial pirate mascot. Running out of bullets, Benny throws him a clip, and Boy reloads to shoot and punch the pirate's face simultaneously. Boy sees Mina, scared of his violent side. Melanie tries to shoot Boy, but Benny tackles him, taking the bullet instead. Basho fires back and scares Melanie into hiding while Benny dies in Boy's arms, muttering something Boy can't understand. Melanie sneaks around and shoots down Basho before trying with Boy again. He runs up the stage and uses a pineapple mascot as a shield, rolling it down to knock Melanie over and capture her. Boy ties Melanie to a chair and pushes a camera toward her, instantly killing her. Then he checks on Basho, who is alive but very weak. Basho still wants to fight, so the duo takes the hallway and encounters more guards. As Basho starts having trouble walking, Boy continues to kill every man in his way as his memories remind him of the death of his family, fueling his hunger for revenge. Several minutes of violence later, all the guards are dead, and Boy snaps out of it to discover Basho died from his wounds. Nearby, Boy finds Gideon, who was also shot by Melanie. With his last energy, Gideon gives Boy a key card to access Hilda's bunker. When Boy gets ready to kill him out of mercy, Mina appears to make him stop. Boy finally tells her she's dead and he doesn't need her. The hallucination disappears and Boy kills Gideon. Next, Boy gets in the elevator and Hilda appears on the screen, saying he'll die for nothing. Boy shows Mina's drawing to say he's doing it for her, causing Hilda to hang up. The elevator takes him to the bunker and when the doors open, the guards don't shoot. June 27 takes Boy to the main room, where he sees some family paintings that include him and Mina as a child. Hilda rushes to hug him and apologizes for not recognizing him, dropping big news, Boy and Mina are actually her kids. As she explains what happened, Boy starts remembering the truth. He had been at the culling but not as a victim, he had been a participant. The real victims were the shaman, his son, a woman who he had thought was his mother, and her daughter. Hilda forced Boy to fire the gun to kill them, but Boy only managed to kill the children and the woman before having a breakdown. His shooting became erratic and everyone panicked, allowing the shaman to run away. Overwhelmed with guilt, Boy ran into the jungle to cry alone. The shaman found him and started to choke him, but he stopped when he got an idea, he kidnapped the kid, then he started to brainwash him to change his memories. He even hurt Boy, convincing him it had been wounds from the government. The shaman cut out Boy's tongue and burned his ears to make him more controllable. Back to the present, Hilda finishes the story by saying Boy has been killing his aunts and uncles. She also reveals that June 27 is actually Mina. As Boy falls to his knees in shock, Hilda asks for the proof that her son is still in there and slaps Boy when he doesn't react. She concludes this isn't her son anymore, so she orders Mina to kill him. Also believing this isn't her brother anymore, Mina starts beating up Boy and takes out her axe for the kill, but she freezes when Boy puts up his hand. Remembering the day with the statue, Mina turns around and kills her mother instead. Another family member activates an alarm and the siblings run to hide as the soldiers open fire. They steal some hidden weapons and run down the corridor, where they start fighting all the incoming soldiers. Together they make a marvelous team and easily kill any man that dares to go against them. Suddenly three guards arrive with heavy weapons and Mina gets wounded. Thankfully she's fine and teams up with Boy again to tackle another soldier, using him as a shield to run through the corridor. They reach the guy with the Gatling gun, who Mina pulls down while Boy uses his own weapons to kill him. As more soldiers arrive, the siblings run to the elevator to escape. 
Suddenly the elevator is called to a different floor and when the doors open, they see the shaman. Using sign language, the shaman tells Boy to kill Mina because she's also part of the evil family, but Boy refuses. Mina quickly attacks the shaman and lands a few hits, but he easily overpowers her. When he's about to kill her, Boy hits him to make him drop her. Then the siblings attack the shaman together, however the shaman is incredibly fast and attacks in all kinds of dirty ways, giving the siblings terrible injuries. He also headbutts Mina to destroy her helmet and hurt her with the shards, making her bleed quite heavily. Now Boy has to fight the shaman alone and after a few moves, he steals the man's necklace to cut him multiple times with it. As he throws the shaman all over the room, he accidentally drops the necklace and the shaman grabs it back to cut open Boy's leg and arm. Boy grabs the shaman's hands and with the help of a vision of his younger self, he pushes down the necklace to finally kill his mentor. After screaming in physical and emotional pain, Boy checks on Mina and confirms she's alive. She wants him to escape, but he picks her up and they leave together as Boy remembers their days in the arcade, mentioning it's better to have a player too. Sometime later, the siblings are in an abandoned building eating cereal like the old times.